Okay, this is the November 2016 momentum question. This is one of the few questions with a graph, although I've seen more graphs coming up in recent years. It says the graph below shows how the momentum of car A changes with time just before and just after a head-on collision with car B. Obviously, you know when you've got a head-on collision, it's when two cars are basically traveling in opposite directions and hit each other. So then it says to you, car A has a mass of 1,500 kilograms, while the mass of car B is 900 kilograms. So if we're going to look at the cars, car A will be a large car and car B will be a smaller car. Car B was traveling at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second west before the collision. Okay, so west is this way, and so car B was traveling at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second. Then it says take east as positive, so this way is positive, and it says consider the system as isolated. So this graph says it's for car A, and if you look on the axis here, all of these values are positive. So if you didn't realize already, car A must have been traveling east because all of the values on the graph for momentum are positive and the sign for the momentum takes its um, uh, value, whether it's positive or negative, from the velocity, not from the mass, because remember mass is a scalar, momentum is a vector. So the sign of the graph is also telling you the direction of the velocity of car A. Now it says to you, what do you understand by the term isolated system as used in physics? So if you look at the definitions, the definitions tell you it is a system on which the net external force, see here the net external force, where did my mouse go? No, there's not my mouse. Net external force is zero. So what this really means, if you look in the exam guidelines, it says everything else is being ignored, things like, friction. So when you have a collision or something, there will always be uh, heat loss because when the objects um, impact, there's heat, there's noise, sometimes there's light. So all of those are things that we're going to ignore and we're going to ignore the friction happening. And then these are our three momentum formulas. Remember P is the symbol for momentum and it's a product of the mass and velocity and it is a vector. Then we've got this F net times by, so the net force times by the change in time equals the change in momentum. Remember the change in momentum is also known as the impulse. And we can calculate the change in momentum either using this F net delta T formula or saying the change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So we're going to go back and use these formulas to solve the questions. So the first thing is here, we know that an isolated system, we're going to ignore the external forces. And then it says, use the information in the graph to answer the following questions. It says, calculate the magnitude of the velocity. So when it says the magnitude, we know that we don't um, need to put a direction on the velocity, even though it does have a direction, which we know is east from the graph and it being positive. So it says, just before the collision. So we have to use the information on this graph and figure out where's the collision. So the collision is obviously going to change the momentum of the car, because if you've got car A over here, and it bangs into car B over there, clearly the momentum of car A is going to change. So if we look here, here it had a constant momentum, and here it had a constant momentum, and we know this because the graph is flat, the gradient is not changing, there is no change in momentum. But if we look on this other section here, this section where the graph is sloping, obviously the car should not be losing mass, so the only way it can be changing its momentum is by changing its velocity, and so this part here must be where the collision takes place. So if we want to know the magnitude of the car A before the collision, we are going to use this information here. So the graph is telling you the momentum, always check your units, it's in the correct units for momentum, so we don't have to do any conversions. Momentum is given the symbol P, so we know P, the momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. We are looking for car A. Car A's mass is 1500 kilograms. From the graph, the momentum before the collision is 30,000 kg meters per second. 
So 30,000 is going to be equal to the mass of the car, 1,500 from the question, times by the velocity. So if you plug this into your calculator, you end up with an answer of 20 meters per second. Remember your units, and because it says magnitude, we don't have to put the direction, but the direction here would be east. Now it says to you, calculate the velocity of car B just after the collision. Okay, so from the graph, we've got no information about car B, but we do know before the collision. Car B had a constant velocity of 15 meters per second west before the collision. And the question says take east as positive and consider the system as isolated. So if the system is isolated, we are now going to use the law of conservation or the principle of conservation of momentum to answer this. So the momentum, the total momentum of the system, not of one particular car, but of both cars combined, which makes up the system, the total momentum of the system before the collision is going to be equal to the total momentum after the collision. So the momentum final, the sum of the initial momentum is equal to the sum of the final momentum. So what have we got objects here with momentum? We've got the momentum initial of car A, plus the momentum initial of car B is going to be equal to the momentum final of car A plus the momentum final of car B. So some of this is easy to fill in from the graph. Initially, we've just used this initial momentum for car A, so we can read it straight off the graph. We don't need to go mass times velocity. We can say, okay, this was the initial momentum for car A, and then there was the collision, and here is the final momentum of car A, which we can read off the graph here as 14,000. And you can see it's still positive. This is a vector, so this is important that we keep the sign. So we've got those two from the graph. Now, we can figure out the initial momentum of car B because momentum is mass times velocity. So we know the mass of car B, okay? That is 900, so I'm putting in here mv, so the m is 900, and I'm running out of space here with my lovely handwriting. Car B was traveling west and east is positive, so the vi of car B is actually negative 15 because of the sign convention, so we're going to put negative 15 in here, and then they asked us for the velocity of car B, so we're going to have to say the mass, 900 of car B, times the final velocity of car B. Now, we don't know which way car B went. Did these two cars bang into each other and then, car a and then combine and then car A moved off that way? Or did they bang into each other and then the one car went this way and the other car went that way after the collision? We don't know which of those happened, but the sign of the velocity is going to tell us which way car B was traveling after the collision. So if we put this into our calculator, we end up with like 30,000 minus 13,500. Remember the momentum is a vector. And then we have on this side 14,000 from the graph times 900, the final velocity of car B. So if we put this all into the calculator, we should end up with a velocity of 2,77777, which we'll round off to 2,78 meters per second. But now take care. This question says the velocity of car B. It doesn't say the magnitude of the velocity. So we have to have the correct direction on this, and this direction will be east. How do we know it's east? Our answer was positive, and the question says east is the positive direction. Now it says to you calculate the magnitude of the net average force acting on car A during the collision. So we know F net delta T equals delta P. So the net force, the average net force multiplied by the change in time will give us the change in momentum. So the magnitude of the net force acting on car A, we have to First, let's read off the graph. What is the change in momentum? The change in momentum will be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. 
So the final momentum was this 14,000. Okay, the initial momentum was the 30,000. And then if we put that in our calculator, we should end up with minus 16,000. Okay, and then on this side, we're looking for the F net. But now we need to know what is the value for delta T. So this will be T final minus T initial. So you have to come to the graph again. And when did the collision end? The collision ended when car A started moving off at a fixed momentum. So this over here is TF. And so this must be TI when the car's momentum changed for the first time. So this is going to be F net. And then the final time was 20 comma 2. The initial time was 20 comma 1. So this is going to be F net multiplied by 0 comma 1 is giving us minus 16,000. So the net force is going to be minus 160,000 newtons if you put this in your calculator. But now that minus is indicating that the force was um, acting in the opposite direction to the way the car was traveling. But the question doesn't ask you that. It asks you the magnitude. So we can ignore the sign because it asks for the magnitude. But you should know that the force was acting against the motion of the car, which we do know because it was a head-on collision. But that is why the answer has no sign because the question just asked for the magnitude. And don't forget it's a force. So because it's a force, the unit of force is the newton. And if you don't put your unit on, you won't get your mark.